Hey all brothers and sisters, my name is Captain Meatshield and welcome back to Factorio. Now, it's been a long time since anything to do with this has been seen on the channel, since I only covered the demo earlier this year. Um, but I recently picked up the full game for myself and I've been watching a lot of stuff to do with it on YouTube. And I have some plans. Um, I've already started by making myself a pickaxe and... We're just going to get started on building up some basic facilities. Um, I'm also not entirely sure on how I'm going to run this series. Um, I'm kind of recording this right now as just kind of getting the basic footage together and trying to make sure... Let's plonk that down here. Um, but now, yes, I need to fuel this. Right, okay, I'm just going to leave those going for a minute. Um, because what my plan is, is I've been watching a channel called Mangled Pork Gaming. Which I know is a funny enough title in itself. But uh, Bentham, the guy who rise, runs, the, runs that channel, he is an avid factorial player. He's been playing it for like two years now, since it was in very early development. Um, but I was inspired by one of his series, which I've watched all the way through so far, uh, which is a series he's run called Factorio Towns, um, which he did with kind of like the idea of, um, like sort of like the Industrial Revolution of um, U the UK, um, and he had kind of like a very sparse map that was that he just went around setting up towns and everything ended up being like connected via railways and all that sort of stuff and it looked like a really cool idea so I'm kind of borrowing from his format but I'm also trying to twist it about a little bit um, because mine this series I'm hoping is going to be vaguely inspired by Attack on Titan everything is going to be surrounded by walls um, so to that end, like with regards to the map setup on this, um, there, like all of the stone deposits are very dense um, in comparison with what they normally would be. Because generally, with a lot of stuff to do with Factorio, stone isn't a huge demand. People don't really need it so much. You only, you know, it's it's not as important as other resources like iron and copper and coal um, but because I want to surround everything that I build with walls and eventually encase it in like a, a tiered wall system like in Attack on Titan um, provided I can get that to work um, I'm going to need lots of stone so I've ramped up the density of the stone deposits and hopefully this should turn out to be an interesting series. I've no idea how well this is going to work. Um, I'm also in two, in several minds of how I'm actually going to record and edit this series. Because I like just these standard sort of, you know, live, co live commentary. Um, where I just talk bollocks directly over what I'm playing. Um, Sometimes that can prove to be a little bit difficult. The other way that I'm... Another way that I'm planning on trying to get this to work would be uh, in a post-commentary style. Uh, what I'm planning on doing with this is I am going to record for an hour. And... Let's put on that so I can see what's going into what. Yeah, I'm going to record for an hour. And then I'm either going to chop it down into a manageable video or I'm going to do what Bentham does with his, with some of his series and that will be to record the full hour then speed it up and do post commentary over it but I don't know which one I'm going to do first so I'm recording this just on the off chance that I go with this option but for now I'm just going to get some basic facilities set up I need to sort out um, basic smelting for iron and copper already got some stone going iron is 
getting there. I'm going to make another setup for it so that I've got extra because right at the start you need lots of iron. That is the main priority. I'll get a little bit of copper set up and I'll start trying to sort out some basic steam power. Okay, so this big wide open area is going to be good for setting up a basic facility. I'm concerned that a lot of the resources that are around are a little too plentiful. I mean, we've got a lot of iron and copper and coal all directly around, so everything's going to feel fairly condensed to begin with, which, I mean, it's not exactly what I was hoping to go for. I was hoping to go for something a little more uh, spread out, but Factorio's kind of map generation um, can be a little iffy. I mean, I could go in and deliberately make myself... You know, I could use the map editor, I suppose, to make the perfect map for what I want to do, but I don't know. I'm going to just see how things go. I mean, like, all this desert area is going to be fairly barren, so there's not much in the way of trees lying around. Everything's pretty much dead. Like this dead, dry, hairy tree. What makes it hairy? Ugh. Okay, we're getting plenty of stone now. I'm... Just trying to make sure I've got enough materials to make half of the uh, steam engine setup that I want to do. Because there's a very specific ratio with regards to a lot of the stuff in this game. In order to get the maximum efficiency out of... Um, ooh, what am I doing? In order to get the maximum efficiency out of things like the power generation, you need to have a certain ratio of something to something else. With the steam engines and the boilers that power them, uh, you want a ratio of uh, it's one offshore pump, which I need to build, uh, then it's seven boilers and well, it's 14 boilers and 10 steam engines will get you the maximum efficiency. So what, I tend, what I've been doing is I've been setting up five steam engines to start with, with seven boilers, and then I uh, expand from there. I'm not sure how permanent this is going to be. I might end up shifting things around in the future, but for now, this will do nicely. Okay, so the water is flowing. Now we need to sort out getting uh, coal involved. Unlike the demo of Factorio, this is this has a set objective, but it is pretty much just a sort of sandbox thing where you get in and you just build and you automate things and you do have an end goal. But it really is just fun to get in and dick about and make your own elaborate factory setups. And I'm hoping that this could prove to be an interesting series. It is going to be a very slow-paced one. Um, so it may not be to everyone's tastes. And for that I do apologise, but I absolutely love this game. And I have sat around for hours and hours watching videos on YouTube about it. My girlfriend is sick to death of hearing about it. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, she is beyond sick of this game. But I'm hoping that I am going to be able to... Because... While I've watched a lot of stuff to do with Factorio, and I've been playing this a lot since I got... I don't think I've really been playing anything else, really, other than what I've put up for uh, videos. But I'm by no means like an expert or anything like I've not even completed got to the end goal even once yet so this is going to be a learning experience for my for me as well as trying to be some sort of entertainment for you lot and if any of you out there are avid factorio players then please don't yell at me too loud if I start doing things horribly okay here we go 
getting the steam engines running. Fantastic. How's mining jaws going? And we have some sense of automation. Huzzah! What I'm going to be doing next is uh, automating the iron smelting, I think. One thing I should probably do is get a lab sorted out so I can at least start getting some research by manually making science packs. With what I have in mind for this, I am going to need access to stone walls and turrets fairly quickly. Um, but the first thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to research automation so we can start building this, we can start worrying about assembly machines and then we're going to go from there. Boom! Okay. Research is happening. It is slow because we only have one lab going at the moment. And we're having to manually, manually craft all of our uh, red science, but for now, things are starting to happen. I think I might set up iron smelting here. So, how do I want to do this? Again, this is not really going to be permanent. What I want to do, as I'm setting stuff up throughout the course of the game, is I'm going to be setting up, uh, like, districts... Or, I suppose in a similar vein to uh, Bentham's Towns. Ooh, research is done. We have automation. Uh, next, I want logistics so I can get underground belts and splitters and all that sort of fancy shit. Yeah, in a similar vein to uh, how Bentham set up his Towns uh, series, what I'd like to go about doing would be setting up various districts or towns or however you want to call them. Um, I think for, for my own purposes at this, I'm just going to be I'm going to be calling them districts. Um, but they're each going to have like a. Sp eventually, they'll have like you know. A big central power district that's going to be all surrounded by walls and turrets and everything. Um, that'll be eventually supplied by rail when it comes down to. Uh, the coal power, and. I'll have like smelting districts for getting all the ores turned into plates and then like steel processing and uh, smelting for stone so we can just get walls built and assemblers and everything. It's all going to be fairly well organized, I hope. We're just going to have to see how it goes at the moment. I don't really have any set plans for what I'm doing with this. This first like couple of episodes, or first few episodes, um, it's going to be fairly slow going, because obviously we've got to get ourselves established, we've got to get everything set up in the first place, just so that we can get stuff, get the basics sorted out. I'm doing a horrible job of explaining myself with this. Just bear with me, it will be fine. I hope. Okay, we have logistics finished now. Ooh, that took a while. Um, all right, now I'm just going to wait around for iron plates so that I can build one underground belt and a splitter. Shouldn't take too long, I hope. Put this in place. And there we go. We have coal on its way over to our iron smelting which is now completely automated. I don't have to fuel any of the furnaces. All the iron is just going to load itself in all automatically, which is just awesome. And there we have it. Iron plates are moving their way forward. Ooh, I need to put, extend that up a bit. There we go. Good. Yeah, feel accomplished now. I've got a fuck ton of stone here. That all needs to be ground down into bits and turned into walls. And now the glorious thing is, I can just stand here and hoover up iron plates as they're made. Which makes things a lot easier for me. I don't have to go running around chasing after all these bloody things. That one I'm going to leave there because it's just on its own. But these two, I think I can pack up for the day. Now in the kind of early game, copper's not needed 
quite as much as iron. Iron you need loads of to make an absolute metric fuck ton of belts. Because belts make the world go round in Factorio. Mmm, tasty, tasty iron plates. Mm. Fills me up in my belly. That's turrets finished. Let's get stone walls on the go. Okay, we have our stone walls research finished, which is great. And for now, I'm just going to leave research because I want to start automating the creation of science packs. Which means that when it comes down to getting research done, I don't actually have to do anything other than select them. Which is really handy. And that is the copper automated. Um, one thing I'm going to do, which is a neat little trick. What I learned from watching Bentham's videos is putting in belt balancers. Where you essentially just do something like this. Pop in a splitter in order to be able to shuffle all of the materials onto both sides of the belt so that you can increase the capacity. Now, let's set up a basic facility for creating science packs. Why did I make all of these individually? Okay, so now I've got this buffer chest. What's this? What this is going to do is it will fill up to this point here. Um, it will load in from this side, and if this side should ever be empty, then it will unload so that there's always supply available, hopefully. It also means that if I ever really need a quick, easy access to either iron ore or copper, I now have immediate access to them via these two chests, which is exceptionally handy. Now we're going to start automating some production of science packs. Okay, hopefully I have set all this up correctly. I'm just trying to make sure before I wire it all up and we throw it all into action. You are off center, that is not good. Okay, so what we have here. Uh, yeah, that will do for now. We have iron plates which will go into gear production which will end up in this buffer chest, which has capacity 400 gears. This will fling them over onto this uh, belt here, uh, copper wire and iron plates which go into electronic circuits, which will buffer chest into that and go onto here as well, which will swing along this way. And then four assemblers for red science, which need copper and copper plates and gears. So let's wire it up and see what happens. Look at it all go! <laughs> ah, it's awesome. Oh shit, I've got to wire up the uh, outputs. Alright, now where did that uh, lab of mine go? It's over here. Um, I should probably also start worry worrying about building myself some turrets. Because I'm likely to need them. Oh, I see a little blip on my radar. On my map. Is that a biter? That's a biter! We have our first attack and it's already managed to destroy something. Little bastard. Okay, well. That just shows the tenacity of these little shits. They really are quite content to just go after stuff. So that is already a sign that I need to start getting uh, my walls set up and turrets in place to defend everything. So far things look to be going okay. I'm going to set up uh, two turrets by my steam engines because I am not willing to let this lot get blown up. It's not going to go well for me if things, you know, if my power supply ends up going immediately. I'll start the uh, automated manufacture of uh, stone walls then I don't have to worry about that part of base defense. Ooh, the power system. I want to get power cables in line. Let's bump them up into overdrive. I'm going to need to build myself some more um, engines in a bit. 
And there you have it. We have the automated smelting of stone into stone blocks, or stone bricks, however you want to bloody pronounce it. And then an assembler that is building stone walls for us. Now that feels pretty good. So there we go. Things are off to a good start, I think. Um, I think I might get this other column of steam engines put in first, and then maybe build some lights or something. Because I know this is going to be difficult for people to see. <laughs> shit, 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 shit! Mm. Well, they came out of nowhere. I'm going to attack that differently. I'm going to go and put these turrets in first. So we are already off to a bit of a nightmarish start with these biters. Ugh. Yeah, we are going to need a lot of defense in this series. Good, those turrets have done the job. Much better than last time. Well done. Thank you. Just going to encase these turrets so that they've got a little bit of defense from the biters. I didn't quite have enough walls for that, but eh, you win some, you lose some. I think we are off to a fairly good start. Project Attack on Factorio? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever I'm going to title this. Okay, bullet damage one, finished. Fantastic. I think I might go with armor crafting two. I could do with some better armor after that last attack. I didn't have any armor. That would probably explain why I died. Hmm. All right, yes, let's get that researching. And I am going to leave this episode off here. I'm just going to say thank you all so much for watching this episode. This could be the start to a very entertaining, I hope, series. Again, it might be slow-paced. It might not be your sort of thing. And for that, I do apologize, because I know that this isn't going to be the sort of game for everyone. But it is something that I like, and I'm hoping that it can be somewhat entertaining for you all. But we will catch up with this sometime soon, and see this space develop into something a little more impressive. But I shall just say thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, and you want to see more Let's Plays or Metal Covers from me, you can check out the playlists that are on the channel, and you can follow the links in the description below to find me on social medias. But for now, thank you again for watching this video, and I will catch you all very, very soon. This is Captain Meat Shield, signing off. Still, oh, I'm saving money to buy clothes. There's a nice shop over there. I am not naked! Perfect auto-save time, thank you.